Hey there, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at different methods for shortening the rope. In a previous video we took a look at how to shorten the rope using kiwi coils, so make sure to review that if you haven't seen that in a while. Today we're going to be looking at how to use your pack to shorten the rope. It can be a really great tool, but it can also get in the way, so we'll also take a look at how to use your pack if your pack is full and you don't want to add kiwi coils onto you. Just for review, you might want to shorten the rope if you're doing glacier travel, so you don't need a full 60 meters of rope for you and one or two friends that you're out on the glacier with. Maybe you're in fourth class terrain where you don't want to pitch it out because then all this extra rope will be running over loose gravel or loose rock and could cause rock fall. Or sometimes you might even be simul climbing in a recreational context. Um, and so you don't want so much rope out so you can communicate easily and reduce rope drag. So let's take a look at these four different methods for shortening the rope when you have a backpack. Okay, this first method we're gonna look at is a really good thing to use if you have a large backpack that is full like mine is. I have an alpine climbing pack that has all my overnight gear in it and there's not really any room to accommodate the rope. So I can't put the rope inside this pack so I'm going to put this rope on top of the pack. Okay? So we set that aside for now. So I've stacked my rope which simply means to organize your rope by piling it from one end to the other. So one end is on the bottom and the last end is on top. And I'm going to grab that top end. Now this top part of the stack is what I'm going to use to measure my distance between climbers. So in this case I'll have one climber on the end. If we're doing glacier travel I'll probably have them clip into a figure eight knot like this. Okay. If we're doing um, roped climbing through technical pitches of ice or rock then I'll probably have them tie into the end. If we're doing glacier travel with just two people, you're going to want a lot more distance than if you have three or more people on the rope. But just for simplicity right now, I'm going to do six arm lengths, which is commonly what I'll use for three or four people on the rope, um, and measure that off. So let's say we want about 36 feet of rope between us, which my arms stretched out like this measure just about six feet. So if I do six arm lengths, one, two, three, four, five, six. That gives me just about 36 feet. I can also measure things off that way if I anticipate that there'll be sections of near vertical terrain that are up to 36 feet. Um, that'll give me a 36 foot pitch of rope available, okay? And then I'm gonna just do a slip knot right there just to mark that so I don't lose track of where that was. You can do any knot there. Okay. Next, I'm going to continue stacking until I find the middle of my rope. Okay, so I've already put an overhand knot to mark the middle. Okay, but at this point you want to put a small overhand knot in there. And then with the remainder of the rope, I'm going to coil it up so it can go on the top of my backpack and be lashed down for stability. So an easy way to do that is to make little T-Rex coils and finish it in the way that you would finish an alpine coil. So to make a T-Rex coil, I will put this knot just so it's maybe two to three inches above my belay loop, okay? That's to accommodate the distance of a carabiner once that does clip into my belay loop. And then keeping my elbows bent like a little T-Rex, I'm gonna make little loops of rope over my neck, same way you would for a butterfly coil keep going until I've used up almost all my rope. Okay, so now I have a little more than two feet left over. So I'm going to take this short coil off the back of my neck and I'm going to finish this the way I would finish the alpine coil. Take a look at our free video on how to make an alpine coil to see this up close with a little bit more detail. And make a small loop, another small loop, and I'm going to wrap this toward the second loop that I've made, cinching it down nice and tight so it's really going to be secure and snug and not come undone unexpectedly, which could be a tripping hazard. It's good, cinch that up. Now I can place this nice tight meat coil on top of my backpack. Okay. I like to place it right on top of my shoulder straps and many alpine packs have a rope strap that comes right over the top and will cinch that in and then 
just for neatness, I like to use these compression straps on the side and get the coil underneath these compression straps as well. So that's so. Uh, Okay, so now you can see I've taken up that coil. It's going to be nice and neat. It's not going to shift around on me while I'm climbing. And I'll put that pack on. I like this knot to come over my right shoulder because I'm right-handed. It's a little easier to keep track of for me. Just pull that down a little bit, and I'll clip that in with a locking carabiner into my belay loop, just like so. Lock that down. Keep things organized. I'm going to clip my waist belt and my sternum strap around that strand. So that keeps it out of the way. Easy for me to see where things are going and coming from. And now I'm going to take in uh, just a couple of Kiwi coils until I reach that slip hitch. So I've got my distances all set up correctly. Over the back of my neck. Okay, so here is that little slip hitch. So that's just about enough rope for me to tie these off. So put that over my shoulder. Tie these Kiwi coils off. Pop that slip hitch out. Just like so. And I like to add a little more security with a locking carabiner down here. So if I'm doing pitches of of low fifth class climbing, I can attach myself to an anchor there, or I could take a belay on that, and if I fall, it'll come right under my harness. And so there we go. We've got 36 feet between myself and the next climber, whether we're doing glacier travel, and again, with two people, you'd actually want more than 36 feet. Or in this case, it's probably set up well for alpine rock, where we want just a little bit of space between us, so we can flip that back and forth around horns and other terrain features. You can take a look at our other videos for how to carry this rope between us when I don't need that much rope out. Okay, in this next demonstration, I'm going to show what to do if you have a little bit of room inside your backpack to accommodate some or even all of the rope sometimes. Okay, so this is probably the most common method that I use to stow the rope when I'm doing glacier travel because typically I will carry my equipment up to a base camp that has minimal to no glacier travel and set up base camp and then when I'm going from base camp to the summit which is where the majority of the larger crevasses are I need to make sure we're all set up for glacier travel and since I leave camp set up down below my pack is mostly empty so there's plenty of room inside my pack to accommodate the rope. So I'm going to start a very, in a very similar fashion to the last way that I stowed the rope on my pack. So I've stacked my rope and at the end I put in a figure eight on a bite Okay, so that's for the end climber to clip into, especially if we're doing glacier travel. They'll clip in rather than tie in, which makes it easy to get out of the rope for boss rescue. And then I'm going to measure off my distances. If I'm traveling with just myself and one other person on the rope, I might have eight arm spans to nine arm spans between us, depending on what type of glacier I'm on and what part of the country or what latitude I'm traveling at, or the size of the crevasses. Um, in this case, I'm just measure off six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's going to be where I want to be attached to the rope. So I can just do a bite knot. An overhand on a bite is fine. It might become a little disfigured or if it takes a full load, but it's not going to come out because it's going to be clipped into a locking carabiner. You could do a butterfly hitch there. You could do a figure eight on a bite. Any of those are totally fine, but an overhand on a bite works just great okay and with the remainder of this this is what I want to put inside my backpack so before I did little tiny t-rex coils with the knot starting at the same length of those t-rex coils right here but in this case because this is going to go inside my pack I want a little bit more link so that the rope can reach from my belay loop up over my shoulder and then down into my pack a little bit so I'm going to start with this knot right at my knee level roughly and now I'm going to make my T-Rex coils, okay? Just taking up the remainder of the rope that's on the ground there until I reach the end. Okay, I'm going to open that up. 
and finish off with your alpine coil just like previously. Again, check out our alpine coil video to see how to do this. Okay. Okay, so that little lump of rope that's been neatly organized is going to go inside my backpack. right at the top. One of the disadvantages of this technique, of course, is with the rope inside the pack, you'll have to remove that rope in order to get to your food, your water, and things like that. But it makes sense to keep the rope on top rather than your things on top, because if you have to pull the rope out later, you can accidentally spill your water, or your food, and things like that. Cinch that all down. Okay. Put that on. Okay. Put that in. And then I like to have this go right around just like before. And in this case, if we're doing glacier travel, then I want to make sure to maintain that distance between us. So I went, won't take up those extra kiwi coils and we'd be good to go. If I didn't want to shorten that distance, I would just take up kiwi coils between myself and my partner. But this is a pretty common way to rope up the glacier trail. Okay, this next method for storing the rope inside your pack is really common if you've got maybe some fourth class approach to a bigger climb that's true fifth class for quite a while. So you'd like to be able to have some of your rope out and available, but pretty soon you're going to need all of it out and available and you're not really going to want to shorten the rope at any time uh, during those transitions only lengthen it so i stacked my rope just like before and just like before we're going to measure out the distance that i think i'll need for the fourth class section okay so that first fourth class section leading up let's say similar to the before i think that ooh, that 36 feet will be enough so that would give us maybe 30 feet plus six feet left over to use rope material in construction of an anchor. So I'll measure out again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and I'll put in my slip knot there. Okay, just like so. Now this is part's gonna be a little different than what we've done previously. This next part, I'm gonna grab the very tail of the rope from the bottom of the stack and I'm gonna put a barrel knot in it. The purpose of putting the barrel knot in it is to close this system, okay? So that if I end up lowering on this rope and I come to the end of the rope, that can't pass through my device. I'm gonna flip this part of the stack over so that the bottom, which had the barrel knot in it, is now on the top. And I'm now gonna stack this end of the rope into my backpack. Okay. Open my pack up. You can redirect. Some people will do a carabiner on their helmet strap that gives them a real big distance between the backpack and the helmet. You can put on a, just a single length runner around your shoulder and clip in. I'm just going to go off my belay loop. And now I grab the rope and I just push it into the pack as fast as I can go. Stacking this way will allow the rope to pay out straight out of my backpack when I reach that pitch of fifth class climbing and I won't have to restack the rope. It also allows me, if for some reason I've misjudged how much rope that I need for that fourth class section, I can just pull the rope directly out of my pack to gain more rope. Okay, so I've pulled until I've reached the middle of my rope. Right here, I'm gonna just tie that off with an overhand on a bite, similar to what I did in our first technique. Okay. And I'm going to seal that up in the pack. I'm going to have that come over my right shoulder here, so the right hand side of the pack there. So I'm going to just seal that up with this bite knot. I actually want this bite knot practically inside the backpack right now. And that's going to allow me to pull it out of the pack to the right distance. There should be a little bit of tension if I've done this well. Well, it gets clipped into my belay loop. Okay. 
just like so. And I'll cinch that down. Okay, so now the rope is properly stacked in my pack. Put that pack on, like so. Pull, and I'll put that in. Okay, and now I can, just like before, clip around to organize. And then I'll take in these keyword coils until I reach that bite knot, excuse me, that uh, slip hitch that I put in, it, put in there to identify what I thought was the proper distance. And that way I'll have kiwi coils that I can drop if I need more rope. I can also take kiwi coils up if I need a little less in case I've made a mistake in my judgment. And then if I made a big mistake in judgment, I can just pull ropes directly out of my pack. Okay? So kiwi coiling it up. Okay. It's about right. We're locking it off. Take that slip hitch up. That was just a marker knot. Lock that off, just like so. Okay, and we'll be ready to roll. So just to demonstrate how easy it is to gain rope with this method, especially when we get to the pitch of actual fifth class climbing, I can open this up on my Kiwi coil to remove some rope a little bit at a time. But if I found out that I made a big mistake and I was going to need a lot more rope, I can open this bite knot and just start pulling straight out of my backpack. Because it's been stacked nicely inside. Okay. All the way up and then I'll get to that knot at the very end, which jams in the end of my pack so I know the end of the rope is coming and I should stop a lower or stop anything else from going through the system before that knot jams into my bullet gear. So that's a really great technique to use when going into fifth class climbing. Okay, this last technique is a really great technique to learn if you know that you're going to have a fair number of pitches of fifth class climbing and you don't want to have to take the rope out of your backpack, put it back into your backpack. You don't really want to have it attached to the outside of your backpack or be really bulky on the outside of your pack because that can make climbing really difficult. Okay, so this might be common to use on complex ridge traverses, alpine routes with a lot of broken terrain, things like that. But it does require bringing along something extra, which we don't always like to do in an alpine environment. So this will actually use a grocery bag. <laughs> Reusable bags like this Loa bag here, or like an Ikea bag, a small Ikea bag, work really well for this. We're going to end up stacking the rope inside this bag. The other nice thing about this technique is you can easily pop the rope out of your bag to grab out something that you left in the bottom of your backpack underneath the rope while leaving the rope in a nice stack rather than to have it coiled where it can still pull or belay right out of this bag quite easily. So we're going to start very similar to what we've done previously. One climber will be probably tied in this case into the end of the rope for the fifth class climbing. So set that aside and then we'll measure out one, two, three, four, five. There's our 36 feet. We're just keeping it simple. We, this might be more than 36 feet. It might be less. Okay. And then I'm going to put my little marker in there again. Now you could use that marker as where you actually want to clip in as I did to show glacier travel so I'd actually want a hard knot in there or in this case um, I might want to take up kiwi coils to that, that um, slip hitch. Okay, And then I'm going to go back to the other end and similar to our last technique I'm going to put stopper knot in there, another barrel knot and now I'm going to stack it inside the bag instead. Use my belay loop again for that. And I'll just stack. I'll pull until I get to the middle of the rope. 
And that's where I'll do my bike knot. Right there. There's my bike knot. Tie that in. Okay. And then I'm just going to stuff this bag inside my backpack. that bike not come out over my right shoulder again. next I'll take up the Kiwi coils until I reach that slip hitch pop out the slip hitch and lock the Kiwi coil off but I want to just show one of the nice advantages of this particular technique especially if you have longer ropes I've been working with a 40 meter rope but for a lot of routes that have longer pitches of fifth class climbing you're probably going to have a 60 meter rope so in that case I can just reach the base of my root pop this out And the rope is already stacked and ready to go inside this pack. And my end is already on the top, okay? So I'm clipped into the middle right now. So if I was in an alpine environment, I wanted to tie into the middle so I could belay two people simultaneously on one rope folded in half. I could take this out, tie into the middle and tie one of my clients or one of the other climbers into the bottom of the rope that's in that bag. Or I could simply Dump this out, find the knotted end, tie into this end, and my rope would be stacked and ready to go from there after I clear that knot and I can get a belay from the bottom. So it's a nice quick transition from scrambling sort of terrain, fourth class terrain, into fifth class climbing without having to restack the rope so much.